everyone, welcome back to my channel. In case you're brand new here, my name is Stav and today we're going to be talking about runner safety. I wanted to make this video after hearing about Eliza Fletcher who was a runner my age, she was 34 years old, out for her morning run in Memphis, Tennessee. She was abducted, raped, and murdered by a man who had previously been in jail for kidnapping. So, who's surprised there? The justice system failed her. But I wanted to make this video if you're a female who runs or you know a woman who runs and you can share this with her because it just really frustrates me to see this happening over and over and these women are just totally defenseless and have no way to defend themselves. And I know a lot of you probably have that same feeling as I do where you wish you could go back in time, pop yourself into that situation and hand her some way to defend herself because it just really upsets me to think that that could happen to somebody. Um, unfortunately, that's the world we live in where bad things happen to people. And instead of ignoring that, it's our responsibility to prepare ourselves and be able to defend ourselves and fight back if something happens. So that's why I wanted to make this video. I don't want this to keep happening. I want to get this message out there. So please share this with as many women as you can. Not just runners because bad things happen to women like going to the grocery store or coming home from work at night. Like so many... It just really makes me angry. But today I'm going to focus on runner safety because there's a need for it out there. People are running with no way to defend themselves and no no idea of what to do really if something bad happens. If you don't know my background, I'm a firearms instructor. I focus mostly on my channel on women's concealed carry and how to confidently carry a gun. So that's where I'm coming from. And I was working like a regular nine to five job previously and the reason, I think one of the biggest reasons I left that job to pursue this is because I hear these stories about women running and getting attacked and killed and it just really, that's the thing that really made me the most angry, I think. It's just um, women becoming victims while they're just minding their own business, trying to get healthy, you know? Anyway, so let's get into it. So Eliza Fletcher, out for a run at like four in the morning. I've heard people criticize her for that, which is just ridiculous and so we're not those people here, so we're not gonna even get into victim blaming on my channel. but. She was out for a run, probably had to take care of her family the rest of the day, she was trying to get healthy. Um, she went out for a run, was seen by a man. I don't know if he had seen her previously, and this is gonna go into my first safety tip. Change up your route. If you run the same route every day, you walk the same route, you take your dog on the same routes every day, change it up because you never know if someone's keeping track of that and wants to know where you're gonna be at, at a certain time. So if you can go a different way, um, maybe drive a little further, walk a different neighborhood, do something to change up your routine rather than going the same way every single day because you never know if someone's keeping track of that stuff. If you're like me, then you like routine, but change up your routine every day so that no one can know exactly where you're gonna be at a certain time. Another tip that I know is talked about so much is situational awareness, but that's super important. Being aware of what's going on around you. I know that can be hard if you have earbuds in or AirPods or whatever they're calling them these days. Um, I like to work out with music in my ear. I like to run with music in my ear. I'm not the type of person who can get motivated by just the sounds of nature. If you're like me, that's okay. Just have it in one ear. Don't, don't block off both of your ears so that you can still hear what's going on around you. Don't have your music or your podcast or whatever super loud in your ear so that you can still hear what's going on around you, always be scanning. Is that a thing? Let's make it a thing. A, B, S. Always be scanning. Scan your surroundings frequently, look around, make sure no one's watching you or following you. Notice if something's out of place, like if there's a car somewhere that it shouldn't be, it's a little odd, like someone's parked in between houses and there, there's someone in the car watching you. Just notice things. And if something starts to feel off, that's your intuition telling you to pay attention. It's something I go into in my online course. But listening to your intuition is something that I think we've forgotten how to do. Mostly because we've been trained to be polite and not offend anybody and not seem rude. But if someone's creeping you out or you feel like a situation is a little sketchy, then you need to take care of yourself and just forget all those feelings. Listen to your intuition and get yourself safe. 
So recently I was at Home Depot and I shared this on my Instagram stories. If you're not following me on Instagram, follow me at SheEquipsHerself. But I went to Home Depot to get some fencing and the fencing area of Home Depot is like in the back in a separate closed off section. So I was walking towards that area and Home Depot was extremely slow this day. So there weren't a ton of people in the store. And I noticed a guy who had kind of followed me on the way in, maybe going to the same section as me because he needed fencing, but something inside me just told me to pay attention. So as I went into that department with my cart, I noticed he came into that same section of the store as well and I was kind of just keeping an eye on him. Um, he was looking around and I had positioned my cart in a way where it would have kind of slowed him down if he was coming my way because I did have my gun on me and I had my pepper spray but I'd rather not have to use them than have to use them. I'd rather avoid a situation. So I had placed my cart in a way where it would have blocked him if he had come my way and I just kept an eye on him. He was like kind of looking around but also looking towards my direction and I just didn't feel safe. So I decided to get out of that area and as I left so did he and he hadn't gotten anything which I thought was a little odd. It could have been nothing, maybe they didn't have what he was looking for, but I was listening to my intuition, and if it was nothing, great. But if he did wish to do me harm, then I had saved myself from that sort of situation. So I went to get an employee, and I had an employee come with me into that section. And doing things like that might feel a little weird, or you might think that people will judge you if you say, hey, can you please walk me to my car? I just don't feel safe going out there by myself, like if you're, if you're at work and you have a security guard walk you out at night or something like that. It might feel weird, but it's going to be better because it'll keep you safe if you feel uncomfortable in a certain situation. And that's what happens when you're paying attention. Your intuition will start to work with you and will keep you safe. So those things kind of go together. Pay attention to your surroundings, listen to your intuition, and if something is creeping you out, ask for help. I saw a video online the other day. I'll try to link it below if I can find it. It was a woman who was out for a run and it was after this Eliza Fletcher incident. She was out for a run and she saw a car pass by her twice and it gave her a weird feeling. She was she was listening to her intuition. She ended up, because she couldn't get to her car because she saw that car near her car at the end of the video, she ended up going to someone's house in that area and waiting for her mom to come pick her up from there. And I could see in that video she was uncomfortable doing that, which makes sense. We don't want to like seem paranoid, but it's better to seem paranoid than to end up not here anymore. So don't be afraid to ask for help, to ask for someone to walk you somewhere or to help you out if you feel sketched out. Because I don't think most people would mind if someone asked me for help, if someone like came to me. Oh my God, Mila, you just, <laughs> she's scared. Okay. If someone came and asked me for help in a situation like that, I wouldn't be like, eh, you're so paranoid, I'd just help them. So be kind to others, and if you need help, ask for help. Don't be afraid to offend people. As young girls, we're taught to be polite, and to be kind, and to be nice to everyone, and that's great, but there's a certain time and place for that, and then there's a time to be offensive and rude to people. For instance, if someone's making you uncomfortable, make eye contact with them, let them know that you are aware of their presence, and be as rude as you need to be to get them away from you. If someone's standing too close to you, and my sister is really good at this, <laughs> tell them to give you some space. If someone is like in that little personal bubble, tell them to back away. Like you don't, you don't need to be polite, but make yourself uncomfortable to spare someone else's feelings. And of course this is situation to situation, but um, I know a lot of times we won't do things because we don't want to be rude, but don't be afraid to offend someone. If someone's like coming too close to you or like walking towards you in a weird way, tell them to back off or to stop. And if they don't, then pull out some sort of tool, which I'll get into. But you have a right to be rude if someone is making you uncomfortable. I just read my mug. It's kind of a good reminder if you're ever feeling afraid. A few years ago, I attended a self-defense training with a girlfriend of mine. We actually went, it was like every Saturday for a few weeks. We went to a few of them and it was totally free just for women and um, it was really cool. You know, they teach you like about hitting people in the nose and 
uh, in the eyeballs and all this stuff. I thought that the most beneficial part for me was when a man who had this like red padded suit on would attack you. You had your eyes closed so you didn't know when he was gonna attack you and then you had to get him off you. I thought that was really helpful because you actually like feel the weight of a person that much bigger than you and you have to like see what your body can do in that situation. So that was really helpful. But I don't think that if I go to a self-defense clinic for like a couple months, like weekly for a couple months, um, and someone, say my husband's size, attacks me, that I'll be able to defend myself with just my body. If you do jujitsu every single day and you're my size, then maybe. I don't do that and I know that a lot of you don't do that. You don't have the time to go to training like that. I wish I could do that and maybe someday I will, but at this point in time it's just not something that I am able to do. So unless you do stuff like that regularly and that's like your main focus, you need to have some sort of tool to equalize the force discrepancy between someone who's six foot five and someone like me who's five foot two. <laughs> it's quite a big difference. It doesn't matter where you live. You could live in a safe neighborhood, you could live in a very populated busy city, you could live in a place that's surrounded by cornfields and nothing else. This can happen anywhere and it does happen anywhere. In my classes I'd show a picture of a cornfield like from Google Earth, like a street view. You could see the cornfield where this woman was running when she was murdered and then I'd show a picture of a busy street where this other woman was killed while she was running. It's like it, it can happen anywhere so don't think that just because you live in a safe suburban neighborhood where there's like very low crime that this could never happen to you because it can honestly happen anywhere. So you go to those self-defense trainings for a couple months and you think, all right, if someone attacks me, I know where I'm going to hit them. We don't have a say in how or when we could be attacked. So that's why situational awareness is number one in the things you need to be mindful of when you're out there running or doing whatever you're doing by yourself. Second to that are tools. I know some women are not ready to carry a gun and that's okay. I was there before, I didn't always carry a gun. Now I do, but I understand where you're coming from if you're scared. If you are afraid, I do have a free training that goes over the most common fears associated with carrying a gun. It's totally free, it's a 45 minute webinar you can watch and it's gonna be linked below. So if you're interested in that, if you wanna get over that fear and make yourself more comfortable with the idea of carrying a gun, definitely watch that training. And if you don't wanna carry a gun, that's fine. Whether you carry a gun or not, please carry pepper spray. This is the one that I usually carry. This is made by the brand POM, P-O-M. It stands for peace of mind. And um, I will link these below. I do have a discount code if you want to buy some of these. I give pepper spray out to so many women because it just boggles my mind. Like why wouldn't you care? It's so small, but it's potent. Like if I spray this at somebody, they're gonna be out for like 45 minutes to an hour. This stuff is strong. I can clip that anywhere. I can clip it to my sports bra. I can clip it inside the waistband of my running shorts, my sweatpants, inside my pocket. Just make sure that it's accessible, which I'll talk about more in a second. But have a tool. If you don't want to carry a gun, or you don't want to carry one yet, hopefully, um, at least carry pepper spray. And if you do carry a gun, please also carry pepper spray. Carry pepper spray no matter what. But if you only have a gun, then that's the tool you're gonna to use to respond to every situation. And it might not be a situation that legally would allow you to use lethal force. So you wanna have options. This is non-lethal force. It's not gonna cause permanent damage. This is lethal force. It could kill somebody. So have both so that you have multiple options. Clip this somewhere, carry this on your body. Honestly, like the, when I hear the stories about these runners being attacked, I just wish I could go back in time and be like, here you go. Take this, please, like carry, carry something. Have some sort of way to fight back. It may not work, but at least you have a chance. If you have nothing, you have no chance. So <sighs> carry tools. I'm gonna show you both the guns that I'm gonna be showing you are empty, nothing in the magazines, nothing in the chamber. So the smallest gun that I carry is this. It's a Ruger LCP Max. I did a video I'll find it and put it up here, I'm giving you my thoughts on it. I like to carry this gun when my regular carry gun is just a little too big. Um, you can see how small this is, and the magazine holds 10 rounds of 380 caliber ammunition, plus one in the chamber, so I can carry 11 rounds in this 
very small package. I have tiny hands, so look at the size of that gun in my hand. Whereas my normal carry gun, the shield, is a little bit bigger. This is a shield, it's a nine millimeter. This one also carries 10 plus one. It's a shield plus. So it carries 10 rounds in the magazine plus one in the chamber, so I can also carry 11 rounds of nine millimeter. But look at the size difference. If you're running, this one's probably gonna be more comfortable and it's better than having no gun in my opinion. Uh, but it's gonna come down to what you can shoot well. I can shoot both of these pretty well, so I'd feel confident defending myself with either one. Uh, but you can see the size difference there. That Ruger is gonna be a lot easier to carry. Just not as comfortable to shoot. But if I'm gonna go running and I wanna carry a gun and I don't want the bulk and weight of the Shield Plus, I can carry the Ruger LCP Max like I said, it's better than nothing. I'd rather have a gun on me than not. As far as ways to carry a gun on a run, I have done videos on that and I will link them up here. I did one that showed how to run in the summer with a gun, which is up here. And then I did another one that was just a basic running with a gun video where I show that same holster, but with a more cold weather outfit here. I do live in Massachusetts, so that's normally what I would do. I also have these amazing shorts and leggings by Alexo Athletica. So these leggings and shorts, I've done videos on Alexo before because I love their products. It's like Amy Robbins took our day-to-day -day lives and made products to fit our existing lifestyle and I love that. So these shorts have a built-in holster pocket and when you double that with this Flex Tech DeSantis trigger guard thingamabob, <laughs> um, this goes inside the holster pocket and protects your trigger. So this slides into your holster pocket and then your gun goes in and the trigger's protected and because of this sticky finish on the outside, the rubbery like grippy stuff. This won't come out when you draw your gun, but your gun will. So this is some a way to protect your trigger while you're carrying in leggings or shorts. I know people, sometimes especially men who don't even use these products, criticize soft holsters and say that they're not safe, yada yada. Uh, but I really applaud people who are coming out with innovations like this to allow women to carry comfortably when we're out running errands, running, walking, doing whatever in clothes that we would wear otherwise, but now we are able to carry a gun in those clothes without having to change everything about the way we dress. So carrying a gun doesn't have to be complicated. Like I said, check out my free webinar if you want to get more comfortable with the idea of carrying a gun. I know it can be intimidating. I didn't grow up around guns, so I know what that feels like. Please carry a tool on your body. My favorite two, the things that I carry are a gun and pepper spray. Going along with tools, it's important to keep them accessible. If you have a pepper spray and it's like buried in your fanny pack while you're out running and someone tries to attack you, how long is it gonna take for you to get the pepper spray? That's why I like this one so much. It's because of the clip. I love this little clip. It makes it so easy to clip onto your body. I also really like this hand strap that's made by Mace. This has a Mace pepper spray in it right now. I don't love that this is bright orange because it screams like, hey look, I have pepper spray and lets people know what you're capable of. It's best in my opinion to not let people know what kind of tools you have on your body. Um, but you could put a black pepper spray in here, even this would be a little more subtle than the bright orange or like bright pink. I know those are really popular too. But I can just run with this in my hand. Um, I don't have to worry about like gripping it so it's not uncomfortable. And this is my left hand, by the way. I wouldn't carry this in my right because if I need to go for my gun, I want my right hand to be free. So I have pepper spray in my left hand. If I need to use it, I just have to flip that hood up and press down on the red trigger right in here. I really like these ones that flip up. It's much more intuitive than the ones that turn to the side and you have to push them down. That's another reason I really like this palm pepper spray. You just flip it up and then press down and you spray it that way. So this clips wherever. Um, you can also stick it in one of these hand straps, which I really like. Or you can get a Mace Pepper Spray, very well respected brand as well. No matter how you carry it, just make sure it's accessible. And this I think is one of the best ways because it's just always in your hand. So you can respond to a situation very quickly that way. My channel is full of videos that show different ways to carry firearms, so I'm not really gonna go into that aspect of it, but check out my running with a gun videos if you're a little confused on how to do it. Um, and also check out Alexo because they make really good athletic style product. The last thing I want to talk about is that 
as women, we experience the world differently than men do. We're afraid of different things than they are. When I go out into the world, I frequently wonder, <laughs> I know this sounds crazy, but when I go out in the world, I frequently think about someone killing me. And I know that sounds really weird, but if you're a woman, I think you'll understand. If you see like a big dude who's watching you and you're alone, there's no one else in that parking lot, what are you thinking? You, you get it. Men don't have those same fears normally. We live lives through different perspectives than men. We experience the world differently and it's up to us to keep ourselves safe. Unfortunately, bad things happen in the world. Let's not bury our heads in the sand, but instead, let's arm ourselves with tools and training and capability and confidence so that we can protect ourselves and protect our lives and get home to our families at the end of the day. And I hope that through this video, um, I can reach some women out there and just give you a little bit more information and knowledge and tell you that you are capable of defending yourself and that it's up to you to take the steps to get there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please share it with anyone who you think would benefit from hearing this and I hope you all have a great day. Stay safe. Bye.